So we're on the line with Don Stahelik, and he's an urban grocery affiliate. He's using the urban grocery delivery system in Pittsburgh. So Don, I'm happy to have you tonight and to give us some information about how you've succeeded there in Pittsburgh. Could you tell us a, a little about yourself, introduce yourself? Sure. My name is Don Stahelik. Uh, I've been involved with Richard for since April of, well, it's been nine years. So um, I, I've used his uh, software since then. Um, anytime we've had a, a question or a concern, uh, we got together, talked about it, and worked it out. Um, I'm very satisfied with the, uh, the software because it's easy for me. I'm not. I'm very, very much not a computer guy. Uh, I think Richard can vouch for that for me. But uh, the software is easy enough that I can use it. And um, I've been involved uh, for nine years. Like I said, it all started uh, back talking to my kids. I uh, was laid off from a disability product company, and I saw the need for a grocery delivery service because of all the people I was calling on anyway. Uh, they had a need of getting groceries delivered to their homes, and there wasn't a way to fulfill that need. So I got together with my kids and um, uh, got a hold of Richard, got some software, got that started, uh, spent months getting uh, information together uh, on what I wanted to do. Um, I got lucky. I caught up a senior newsletter because about 90% of my clients are, are seniors. Okay. Um, and I, I was going to put an ad in a local publication called the senior news. And here, uh, the gentleman answered the phone. Name's Wally. He asked questions about the business, and I just told him I did. And he said, "You, you should wait. You need to talk to the editor of the magazine." Um, so he said, "But her mom died yesterday." So I said, "Don't worry about it. I'll, I'll talk to her later, next month or a month after." I'm, I was in no great hurry. To me, personal business is much more important than business business. Mm -hmm. So I let it fall. And um, later on that same week, I got a call from the editor, and I gave her my condolences. Um, her name's Lynn, and um, I uh, talked with her a little bit. She said, "Dog, you did me a favor." I said, "Sure. Uh, can you deliver some a pickle tray, or some fruit, some sodas, uh, some sandwich trays, a whole gamut of, of things needed for a little wake celebration?" to the funeral home in, in Westview, which is outside Pittsburgh. I said, sure, no problem. So for the first time I met her on Friday afternoon at 1.30, and uh, she was very appreciative that I did that for her. And she said, pay back big, big on this. And I said, Lynn, I was raised, don't look for paybacks. You help people out, and it comes back to you eventually. So about two months later, I was getting calls from all over the county. Now, my original objective was to do the North Hills of Pittsburgh, which is where I live, and which is northern Allegheny County. And um, I was getting calls from Mount Lebanon, the other side of Pittsburgh, uh, where I wasn't planning on doing. And I was asking these people, What's, how come you're calling me? They said, I, we don't service your area. Well, they said, we saw the article in the senior news. I didn't even know they did an article about us. Uh, here, Lynn did an article based on uh, the website we had uh, and also a little brochure. And she put together a four-column article for their publication. And on it, uh, the last column, she said uh, basically that uh, Don was uh, greatly appreciated at a time of our need. Um, he was a gentleman and offered a great service at the time of our need. So that's just... Uh, Open up the doors for the whole county. We now cover the entire county of Ohio, Allegheny County mm -hmm. in Pittsburgh area. And also, we do some of the surrounding counties, the edges, just to help people out. Um, every year is getting bigger. Um, uh, the, the 
we have over 950 names in our database of people wow. that are using us, where have used us. So it's going pretty good. Uh, it's a great source of helping people out. So. Okay, well, that's great. It sounds like you really were in, inspired to, um, yeah, I mean, you have the, the, a good um, beginning motivation, and, you know, you really want to provide a useful service for people. And, of course, you want to be successful right. and make money in your business, but that's not all there is to it. Right. Well, I don't, I don't feel – I'm not in this business to get rich because it's not that type of business. Um, but it does provide a steady income, pays the bills, um, and it's, it's rewarding in much more ways than monetarily. I, I, I go into people's homes. And I go the extra step. I, I, I put the groceries away for them if they if they're not able to. That's in great. The freezer and refrigerator, and I, I open the refrigerator door and there's nothing in there. Um, nothing at all. Not even butter. It's just wow. empty, and it's it tears your heart out. Um, then you have people that, um. I've gone into homes where I don't know how people can stand to live in the homes they're living in. They're rat infested. Um, I want to call sex, uh, adult protective services, but these people are just living in day to day. It's just tough. But I, I enjoy providing the service and bringing them their food. They like to see me. Uh, I've taken my my girlfriend uh, on several of my my trips around the delivering, mm. and she just looks at it like these people really like you. I said, yeah, they do, because I treat them like people and not like an object. So, wow, I think yeah. I think that's important. So, right, so personal concern for each person. So, you're yeah. talking about particularly the senior market. And that's been your specialty. What would you say to some new people in different areas or cities? How would they get into this market? Well, every city, every town has a senior center or a senior support services uh, organization. Um, I would go to the senior agencies, show them what you're having to offer. Because what the, what they're doing now is they are having their their people go out and buy the products during the day and bring them back to the people's homes. Well, that's more expensive than what I charge. So I express to them that you know I can do a, a grocery delivery for I charge eight dollars for delivery. Um, you're paying an hourly a person an hourly rate. It is much more than that. And they're taking two, three, four hours to do grocery shopping. It just makes sense if you can have them stay with the people or do other things and let me worry about the groceries. It's a win-win. Okay. So senior support services, or are they also disability services? Or are they the same thing or different? Uh, depending on the area, some have uh, – uh, the agency I deal, deal with has both senior services and disability disabled folks. Um, some just do uh, home care agencies that deal with seniors. Um, some deal with disabilities. It's just a matter of basically making a phone call or two and ask for time to come in and talk to them. Most places are anxious to find out another service they can provide their seniors. Okay. Or disabled. Uh, wow. It's not just, I have, I have a lot of people, I have several Clients that just don't like to shop. They're not seniors. They're not disabled, but right. they don't like shopping. Yeah. So, so they yeah, found market too. Yeah. So how did that brings up another question? So apart from the senior market, like how have people found you, or have you done or any kind of promotions? Do you have like a promotion budget, or did you have at the beginning? Well, I. Uh, I hit the bricks. I I did a lot of cold calling on, on the agencies and went to a lot of local churches. I found a churches that wasn't a good, good avenue. I wasted a lot of time doing that. But 
there are so many apartment buildings. Uh, in Pittsburgh, there's over 300 apartment buildings. Um, I put brochures in those apartment buildings as often as I can. I uh, have a little brochure made up about my business. It just says grocery delivery service, uh, a pen at home. I don't even get them printed professionally. You don't need to do that. Uh, go, don't go through the expense. Um, uh, you put up little posters that outside the elevators, wherever you're in a senior high rise or any apartment building. Drop off some brochures on the table at the at the apartment buildings. Um, and word of mouth is great. I find that to be the best means of advertising. I get calls all the time from people wanting to advertise for me. I'm not big enough to advertise for, in my mind. Um, I don't want to go through the extra expense of paying four or five, six hundred dollars uh, for advertising. When, to me, word of mouth, uh, it goes pretty quick. Uh, if you provide a good service for somebody, it happens quick. It's just a matter of wait your turn. So. I don't have a budget for advertising. Okay. Uh, I don't have time to worry about that aspect of the business. Maybe if I did, I'd be bigger than I am. But I'm I'm staying pretty busy. So. Okay. Okay. So, did you do other? Uh, so, other than the senior reaching out to seniors, which sounds like that has been huge and a, you know a primary focus. Did you do, um, and you said you did uh, flyers at apartments, um, any other kinds of things you would recommend or do? Well, I get in front of people as much as you can. I have a appointment set up uh, next Tuesday and the following Tuesday uh, to go into, I think all these apartment buildings have weekly meetings of one sort or another, uh, senior high rise buildings, they have support coordinators that they want people to come in and talk to the seniors or talk to their, 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 their residents, um, let them know what's out there. Uh, they're not there to uh, endorse you, but they're there to provide information to their people and mm -hmm. let the people make a determination if they want to use you. Uh, the meetings for me last about a half hour. It's not like you're spending a lot of time there. Um, it, grocery delivery service is not a complicated service. So you right. can't get in depth for a lot of things because all you're doing is providing a service of taking their order, picking up their order, delivering their order. So it's not real complicated. Um, I, I have meetings as often as I as I get calls for. I never turn them down. Uh, the the uh, congressmen have meetings. Uh, they have yearly get-togethers that they have for seniors. Uh, I, I attend those as much as possible. Okay. Uh, Congress is, congressmen are a good source of, of information because they want you to be at those meetings because you're a service that is direly needed in most situations. Um, so do you focus? I was at doing a, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. No, I'm saying do you focus on the senior buildings or other buildings too? Both. Both. I, I know the seniors definitely need me. I, I think there's a bigger, uh, a lesser chance of getting people to use your service out of a normal, quote, younger crowd mm -hmm. uh, just because of the way the business is nowadays. Um, I really thought that my goal would be to help people in the North Hills, like I said, and I spend very little time in the North Hills now. Most of us in the South Hills. Okay. Uh, don't know why. Just the way it is. Okay. All right. So, thanks for sharing that. It sounds like you're, you know, it, in proportion to your efforts, you know, and you've really done a lot of basic, inexpensive things. I mean, you print up some flyers. I guess they're like, what are they, eight and a half by eleven, or half size, or what? Half size. They're like uh, four. Four inches by 11, 11 and a half. I just take a piece of paper and fold it in half. Right. Uh, I use cardstock. Right. I turn on cardstock so that uh, it's a little more durable. Okay. Uh, of course, it's in color. It's in color, so it looks good. Um, the idea is just to get people to read it. 
uh, if they use you once, maybe we'll use you again. Right. Um, you treat them fair. You treat them fair price rise, price wise. Um, you know, it's the type of business that benefits everyone involved. Right. Uh, so I, I had orders today that uh, one end of the con is to the other. That's why I was sort of running late today to, for this little meeting. Um, I cover the whole county, so it's the big county. Okay. So one thing is like, if you're a new, like new business, a new, what we call affiliates, people who use our system, they're independent, but they're using the urban grocery delivery system. How, and the app, we have an app now, how, um, long would you tell them to like expect to get started? I know there's, it depends on their effort, of course, if they're hitting the streets or whatever, but kind of like a ballpark. I mean, would you say, you know, it would take weeks to get started, months, six months, half a year? What would you, what would you think or suggest or advise? You know what I mean? Sometimes um, I think that, you know, to get an <laughs> idea. Well, I think it's not a rich quick type thing. Uh, it's if you make contacts every day for five months, six months, you'll be doing fine. Uh, you'll get some orders coming out. Uh, even offer incentives, like maybe your first order, no charge for delivery. Uh, then, uh, or some type of other quote gimmick that get people to try it right uh if, if they like your service they'll come back um as far as making money the investment for the software is not that expensive uh in my mind i, I thought it was reasonable uh monthly charges for the uh, uh computer side of things which richard takes care of uh i think is very reasonable um i just like that uh it's a type of system that even a dumb pull up like me can uh, can use. So, <laughs> Actually, yeah. And by the way, well, I am, it's easy I am to use. But you're 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 an intelligent guy. But I know what you mean. You're not a computer geek, right? right. Very much not. <laughs> okay. So I, yeah. Uh, okay. As, wow. as far as as far as how you how you determine where you get your groceries from uh, to, for these people is. I try not to let them tell me where to shop. Right. Um, cause, and I don't, I don't do store brands or generics in, in my situation because therefore anywhere I pick up the items, they're all name brand products and all the stores have name brand products. Okay. So if you get tied into a situation where you want to, uh, the customers want generic, just, I just don't want to do generic. Um, it gives me more more leeway if I if I know a certain item is on sale at a certain store, I might gear my purchasing that day for depending on the quantity of orders I have to a different store. Okay. Um, but do you usually? But I use local grocery stores. I'm sorry. I use local grocery stores for my items. Uh, right. Everything from uh, the major players. Uh, Walmart, Target. Uh, I, I don't use sites like Aldi's. Right. Um, I mean, they're not they're not name brands to me, so that's not what I was raised on. So I don't consider them name brand products. Okay. But um, uh, now, what about? I know at least initially you did set up your database for one key store on your system, and that's how it's more basically set up. Is that still true? Because you have right. it set up for one store for the aisle order and everything, right? Right, right. I can, right now, I, I use that store, one store primarily for 80% uh, oh, of my business uh, purchases. Uh, it allows me the luxury of entering an order on the system and then getting a pick sheet picked where it allows me to follow from row one to row 46. Just by walking through the aisles, I can pick the orders as I go along. From and that's one, a, row one, row two, row three. It's and that should be a lot quicker, right? 
Oh, definitely, because you're not rooting. I like I, I had a call this morning. I was talking with my cousin Terry from Ohio. Uh, I lives in, in Canton, and we were talking, and uh, uh, about another business I'm involved in. And he said that, uh, how, how do you do that grocery business? I said, well, it's just a matter of staying on top of things. Uh, finding out when things are being moved around the store, which you can do that just by walking in the store. Um, and it's important to to have a backup source for inventory. I use the store as my warehouse. I don't go shopping. I'm not a shopper. I hate shopping. Um, so I'm not a shopper. I use it as a warehouse so that I know where the products are on the shelf so basically, I go into that store slash warehouse, pick an order, pack it up, and deliver it to a customer. Mm-hmm. So that's that's easier for me to think about that way because I don't like shopping. I mean, like anyone you <laughs> okay. Me, I'm well, not, you got a good I'm not gonna go, I'm not going to go. I'm not going to go into a store. I'm not going to go into a store and pick this price or that price or this item that price. I know what I want. Okay. All right. Well, great. Well, is there anything else you want to share with us about running a grocery delivery business, especially that you think would be helpful for someone just getting started or in general? Yeah. Well, a couple other items, a couple other things I think are needed to, for the business to help you provide a good service to clients is have a freezer in your vehicle. Okay. Um, they're not that expensive. Actually, get a freezer. Um, they have little portable ones now that hold oh, 30 frozen dinners, maybe, uh, with ice cream and stuff. So that you don't want your ice cream to be melted by the time you make a delivery. Right. Um, so you have a freezer. It's like $160 or something like that for one I have. Uh, works great. People get their ice and ice cream frozen, which is a good service for you providing for the people because they can't even do that themselves. They go to the store and buy ice cream. By the time they get home, it's melted. So if you can tell them, I don't bring your ice cream frozen to you, it's a plus. Okay. Uh, something else, something else I just, if you, uh, I don't use the store tote bags or the, their bags. I have, one of my agencies actually provides me with free cloth t- totes okay. uh, that I reuse. So uh, that way they have no idea where I'm buying their product from. Um, and I just think it's better off for my situation. Uh, plus, the agency loves get the advertising because they get referrals from the ad on, it, on their back. Yeah, um, yeah. Them out a little bit too. So, so win-win. I would suggest that we use like folding. We've used both and have now both folding crates and we have uh, totes that you can typically get like at Lowe's and with covers and those work too. work well. Yes. You know, I have, I use totes also. Um, uh, I got them at Lowe's actually, the gray ones um, <laughs> okay. with a folded, lid, a folded lid, folding lid on it. That's, I can't lose the lid because I would lose the lid. Uh, the lid just is part of the, the tote. And, oh, okay. um, I use those uh, wherever I can because I have a dolly that uh, folds up to be real small uh, and the weight capacity of like 180 pounds. So you can put a lot of groceries on, it, on those totes. And today I had orders for $380 one cut one order. Um, if I had to carry all those bags in, I'd be beat. Well, yeah, so, that's a good easy. point. Uh, yeah, I definitely uh, would so, recommend. Yeah, using a, like a flat cart or or a fold up dolly, either one for apartments and office buildings, definitely. Right, right, definitely. Um, now, a lot of times, if you go into houses or um, areas that don't have uh, uh, ADA requirements, you have steps to deal with, um, so you can't always use your totes as much as you want. Right, but um, but I. Um, any place, like all the apartment buildings, all the senior high-rise buildings, they have to have ADA uh, requirements. So you can just take a tote in there with on a dolly. 
Yeah, or sometimes you could roll it up to the steps if you're in a home or something. Yeah, yeah. It's just a matter of the situation. With with a clock clock tote though, it's a lot easier to carry two totes that hold as many as maybe six plastic bags. So you're, you're you can actually make a lot of deliveries just by using the totes that the uh, clock totes. So you put the totes inside, I mean, the cloth totes inside one of those other things or to keep it like the orders separated, right? Yep, yep. I usually pick between uh, five and seven orders at a time. So that's confusing sometimes, but I've gotten pretty good at it. Um, so that whenever I do checkouts at the, at the checkout, um, we take advantage of everything already organized. But one I thing see. you definitely do is one, one thing you want to definitely have is a tax ID number. Right. So that you 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 cannot pay the sales tax. That's important to save you some money up front because it's hard to reimburse get reimbursed on taxes from the government. They don't like doing that. So. Right. I would recommend um, that. And then the urban grocery delivery system charges the appropriate tax, and you could pay it that way. Right, right. And it's, the system provides you a lot of information at the end of the year. That's uh, right. It gives you all your sales totals, all your tax totals, all your delivery totals, uh, everything you need to file your taxes. So. That's right, definitely. Um, that's interesting. You mentioned about multi-picking versus single picking. I tried both. I preferred single picking, but I see you've, you're making it work. for. Because, um, well, now are you keeping the orders separated all the way through checkout, or are you aggregating stuff and then restarting yep. it yep. after checkout? Yep. Um, all the way through checkout. Okay, that's different. I've never tried that. Because if you don't, then you're going to have to re separate, or you have to keep, so I have to keep things yeah. separate, yeah, in different crates. I found that. Oh, I've, just been, I've, I've, I've been known to have, I've been known to have, uh, Two carts with me, uh, two, two shopping carts, uh, so that I can keep things separate better. So um, you put them I in. I do my shopping early in the morning. No, I don't. I don't bring the totes to the store. Uh, I keep those in the car. How do you separate uh, the orders while you're shopping for together? Uh, I use on, on my top of my page. If it's depending on the size of the order, I might. Put a, a, a arrow pointing to the right, arrow pointing to the left, arrow point down to the right, down to the left. That's four orders I can pick right there. And for a small an additional small order, I may put it up on the, the top shelf of your buggy, um, so that I can. It's 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 it takes a mind getting used to uh, picking it and remembering what people buy. Most people buy the same product over and over and over again i see so with with the custom uh order form it part of your uh, software package it's great because i can go in there and come in an order i go to the custom order form and i hit the uh, button that says uh, uh print custom order form i don't print right. it out i look at the formula because it's easier to pull the numbers off that right so, so the product number so do you use the combined order form? I guess not, because that combines everything together. You have like four or six separate right. order forms? Yep. Yep. So you use the separate ones? Uh, yep. Okay. So then yeah, you when I first started when I first started when I first started I had a a little office uh away from the house here that I was paying rent for and I would ask you I thought the best way to do it was to go out and buy everything, take it to the office, and sort it. Okay. That's not the best way to do it. It's not the best way to do it. It's a pain in the butt. Um, okay. To me, anyway. I was. I would like. I like keeping the orders together because I think I, I sort them one time as I'm picking them, and then I actually do all the bagging of the product myself into my sacks. Right. Um, I dug that too. And because I I I can check in my mind, I know what when you get to these orders, you you know what's on them, and you can verify that 
yeah, that customer bought this before. Yeah, that's fine. And I, I pack everything myself, which the cashier likes having that feature because they don't have to work. But um, right. I just, the way, my mental way of checking things out. Mm -hmm. So it also would depend on the size of the order. If it's a very large order, you probably wouldn't do a bunch at once, I would assume. Right, right. Uh, it's not practical because it might take up a whole cart with one order. Right. So, so, so you're putting things like in the but, front and back of the cart, or in the if it's a real little order, like yeah, in the I top use, of the cart. Yeah, yeah. I use easy. I can get three to five orders in a cart depending on the size. But um, I, I didn't understand. So how you separate them? It's a challenge, but I use my uh, I use my tote. My actually, this it's in the sacks already, so I can just put this up in the sacks, and then whenever I go to checkout. I take that sack and empty the sack out, put it through checkout, and repack it in the same sack. I see. So that so those sacks are the totes. No, there's some other kind of sack. Well, they're they're cloth. They're cloth. They're cloth yeah. tote bag. Okay, I see. Yeah, I can see that definitely working for medium or small orders. That's good to know. Yeah, yeah. keeping the orders separate. So you got a lot of the system can help you with logistics and um, yeah. Well, a lot of great tips. Wow. Well, thanks for coming <laughs> on today. Anything else on your mind about, you know, starting the business out? Like, it seems like um, sometimes people think, you know, if they put the website up, people are just going to start ordering. But I don't think that's true. <laughs> I don't think that's true either. I think, I think you've got to do the, some legwork, uh, go out and meet people or yeah. make a phone call Great to an advice. agency. Or I think if, if, if you want to, get involved and help people out with groceries put forth a little effort it pays off in the end yeah i think that's great advice wow well thanks so much um yeah i think that pretty well covers it unless you have something else on your mind mm, not right now but i'm sure we'll talk more down the road <laughs> yeah well thanks don um yeah so uh that's great and um yeah, we did just come out with our app for the Google Play Store, and we will have it soon also on uh, Apple, at the Apple uh, Store, so um, iPhone Store. So great. So, um, and it's already, of course, available on any um, web browser. Our app is there. So thanks for coming on. Well, on I today, Donna. appreciate your time. Go ahead. I appreciate you having asked me to do this. Uh, if anyone has any questions that, about what I do or how I do it, Hey, give me a call. Uh, I talk to anybody. Uh, I talk to Richard. <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay, Don. Thanks for uh, coming on, coming on tonight, and we will okay. uh, be talking with you again soon. You take care. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye now. Well, that's our interview for this evening. We hope you found this interview to be helpful in getting your home grocery delivery business started. Urban Grocery produces online software app for the grocery delivery business for your store or as an entrepreneur to run your business. So check it out at urbangrocery.net or give us a call and we can set you up with our demo system and you can check it out and we'll be happy to answer your questions. This is Richard Urban, the co-founder of Urban Grocery LLC. And until next time, Good night.